All right, YouTube, it is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Mars Day. I am currently in our pretty much brand new food forest garden in Phoenix, Arizona. This is a front yard garden, and I have a lot of really cool things growing on. Um, this is going to be my second private garden, and we haven't had one in over four years now. Um, if you look back on the channel, you can check out the last one that I had was in Portland, Oregon. Um, but this guy here, we are down in the desert. And this is the first time I've been able to actually plant uh, a food forest in the desert. Uh, my first experience with it, but I have been studying food forestry for quite a long time. Um, I actually learned about it living in the desert over 10 years ago. And so I was really, really excited and grateful to be able to come back out here and... Uh, can you hear those doves <laughs> and um, and do this here um, it's just it's May 10th 2022 and so the heat has kicked in today is a kind of abnormally cool day and so I wanted to take the opportunity to just go through and do a quick one run, run through of some of the plants that we have going um, of course the wood chips um, just kind of talk about what I've been doing and give you guys an update uh, I will be getting more and more videos back on YouTube uh, less talk more doing right let me just do it um, but I definitely will be sharing the growth of this of this beautiful garden that I am absolutely falling in love with there's a wasp there all right so again we are in Phoenix we're in Phoenix Arizona and uh, the temperatures are already in the low 80s to mid 90s I think we hit 100 degrees just recently and if you can see the plants are thriving um, these trees have been in the ground for uh, let's see, I, st I started planting in the beginning of March, so we'll say two months. They've been in the ground for two months. And so everything that you're going to see today is two months worth of growth um, in some pretty warm temperatures. And of course, it all starts with the wood chips. Um, if you are into food forestry, you know that it is all about getting the ground covered and getting the soil protected. Um, I'm going to dig into some of this soil with you here, but um, it all starts with the wood chips. Actually, let's go ahead and walk over to this side here. I have another pile of wood chips. This is my second pile, but um, this is going to be dropped down onto the earth. Actually, you can see here it's a fresh layer. This is all pine, pine wood chips. Um, the first stack I had went up to about this tall, and it was a mixture of all kinds of trees from chip drop. Of course, if you are looking to, to plant a food forest, you don't know about chip drop yet, you definitely should. But um, this is where it all began. I started with bringing uh, some compost and wood chips and laid down the wood chips first so that we could begin to prepare this soil, this ground for all of these trees and bushes and vines I planned on planting. So I wanna talk about the, the few plants that were here first um, this was a regular front yard in the desert covered with let's see a little landscaping rock I have a couple right here actually uh, it was covered with little rocks like this the little pink landscaping rocks there were probably and I think it was like eight tons or so we had them removed first um, and all of these rocks actually that you see throughout the garden that I'll show you that I made the walkway with were all also in the um, a part of the front yard um, desert landscaping they were actually this area right here was had a little wood bridge and all of these larger rocks were making like a rock um, uh, like river like a rock river all the way down um, but the only trees that were or the only plants that were here before uh, these large palm trees we have one really tall one here uh, a little shorter one here and then three three palm trees were here um, this palo verde was here as well um, she did put out quite a few flowers today or, or this year and as you see of course do not get rid of the organic matter right i brought wood chips in and covered the ground with wood chips but we're gonna keep all of our organic matter. Uh, these are the, you know, um, the strips of, I don't know, probably some type of um, 
what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, looking for a word that would talk about the leaves. Be, it's a different kind of a leaf. I can't think of the word right now. Maybe it'll come back. But um, a mm, evolved isn't the word, but we'll just use the word evolved right now. An evolved leaf or a leaf that works for the desert. If we look at the Palo Verde, it's actually not the leaves, right? Because those little bitty, bitty, tiny uh, leaves there. That's the actually Palo Verde leaves, but these are the stems maybe for the leaves to grow out of. And they've just been shedding like crazy with the flowers, but I just sweep them all up and keep them because of course this is just like wood chips, right? This is organic matter and we don't want to throw this away. Um, a lot of gardeners, you know, think that this is trash and we should pick this up and throw it away. Not in a food forest garden. You want to keep all of this dead dying matter because over time this will actually com compost and turn into dirt and there's a couple areas in this garden that are already um, not necessarily transforming into dirt yet but that are you can see the processes of it so when I dig into it you'll see but here you can see all of the little Palo Verde flowers I'm leaving sticks um, everything just gets left on the earth so you don't have to bring it all in. Of course, if you have it already, you have trees that are shedding, save that matter. But um, here in the desert, there aren't too many trees. Um, I even have saved some of the palm trees and have covered them up as well, actually trimmed those. And you can crunch around in here and there's palm trees underneath this, uh, or palm fi um, fans, or uh, I think fans, um, actually underneath here as well. And again, they're gonna, you know dry up they already were dry but um, turn into dirt so let's look at the trees um, so okay so that Palo Verde these three palm trees um, this yucca was also here as well um, this yucca plant which we are gonna get one bloom I didn't water her enough this year so one of the blooms died out but it looks like she's gonna bloom for us a little bit the second one this yucca was here there was a large barrel cactus um, right over there in that little circle, which we'll talk about. Um, this large aloe vera plant was here at the house. Um, this prickly pear was here. And it is a love prickly pear, of course, which I absolutely love. And she's going to have a flower right on top of that heart, <laughs> which is going to be pretty cool. Looks like those three are going to bloom into beautiful flowers. Um, there is a difference when it comes to prickly pears. I'll just talk about this now here. When they're circular like this, it's gonna turn into a flower. My neighbor put me on game. That's gonna become a flower, but these flat ones like this are gonna become the actual, uh, we're gonna grow the plant and become another Nepalese actually. So it doesn't look like we have too many flowers. Um, like over here, we can't tell yet. Some of these might turn into flowers or uh, new, um, uh, oh, look at those cool bugs. Wow. Um, or new, um, stakes. I think they call them stakes. There's another one there, another flower, and they're going to bloom just beautiful flowers that'll turn into some prickly pear fruit. But this prickly pear was already here and this mesquite back here too. And the mesquite is helping out quite a bit with some shade, um, throughout the days. Uh, these trees over here are my plant friend neighbor's uh, yard are, is also helping um, but other than that everything else has been put in just this year um, this is the oldest tree that we actually had on our balcony um, in the apartment before we moved here this is an apple tree I do not know the variety of her um, but she has a few apples on her already that are getting big and um, I do notice that anytime I'm underwatering her, the apples get a little soft. I put some water onto her and then the apples firm up quite a bit. So um, that's just an observation that I wanted to share because I thought it was interesting. Um, she did have like an attack with aphids for a little bit, but we just washed those off and has been doing really well. Um, I look forward to seeing her grow up bigger and really bush out now that she's in the ground. Um, of course, food forestry is all about the layers. I did plant her with some asparagus. Oh, actually, a new asparagus is coming up. Look at that. Two new asparagus. Now, they're really small. Of course, it is in the desert. It's hot, and they just got planted, so I'm hoping next year we get actually some thicker asparagus. But you can see down there, a couple little new asparagus are coming out. We have three come out earlier, 
and they all went to seed rather quickly because it is hot to trot out here. <laughs> Steaming Willy Beeman, that's a big tall asparagus that went to seed. Um, but I actually just planted that root when I planted this tree. And the primary reason that I planted all of these at the same time of the tree is because we are living on some really, really heavy clay-like soil. Actually, this is a picture of it here. Um, this is just a pot of it and this is like it really dry but this is what we're actually living on top of <laughs> uh, this garden has been built on top of and if I put some water in here this is like pure clay it's so thick so heavy no life in it um, the mesquite and the Palo Verde can make it in there but not too much more I mean the, the and the cacti but not a lot of, of life can survive in that I think they call it chelite so I dig out a really large um, hole, double the size of the pot and double the width of the pot that the tree is grown in and fill that back up with um, compost, with worm castings, with um, gypsum. I'm actually using some gypsum out here as well, which is a natural fertile softener. It's um, a calcium carbonate, I think, or some type of a uh, mineral calcium mineral that helps soften the soil um, and then also putting a little bit of the native soil in as well so that the plant can grow accustomed to that um, to that soil but I planted some uh, some cowpeas in here with this guy or lady as well for some nitrogen uh, planting or fixation into the earth into the little root ball here and then also some wild uh, flowers some wild native southwest flowers um, because of course they're going to be able to survive the entire uh, summer heat and flower even though it's going to be you know beyond <laughs> hot for most flowers and uh, and they're perennial they'll just come back every year and they actually survive throughout the year um, so this is a little oh and actually something else is coming up over here too no nope, that that's a sh offshoot of the apple tree never mind um, so yeah so that's our first tree I ended up planting I think there's I think we got 20 fruit trees in and it's about 720 square feet and I'm gonna go around and, and show you each tree but um, I got 20 in in just about a month and a half's time and um, we're gonna let these 20 set in and get and grow up and see who survives and hopefully everyone survives um, and uh, go from there if we need to plant any more but and actually there's a couple moringa seeds coming up too but this is a mango tree um, I am watching her very closely. Um, it is challenging to learn how to grow mangoes in the desert. They do need a lot of care and a lot of attention. Um, I'm seeing some new leaf growth actually coming back from her now. It had slowed down here for a couple of days, maybe like a week. Um, I felt like I had overwatered her, although I've been told I can't overwater in the desert in the summertime. Um, so she's one of the ones that I'm really hoping we get a long time life with and she survives and grows up big and strong. Um, I am fertilizing her with fish emulsion. Um, she's getting some chelated magnesium and iron, also sulfur. Um, sulfur, let's see, you see that right there, that yellow right there, that's little sulfur tablets to help with the pH. Um, I think the issue was was that I did put some native soil back in here. That's it right there. That's that clay. I did put some native soil back into her pot because I thought that that was good so that the tree could learn how to, look at that, <laughs> clay ball could grow in the native soil. And I was recommended that that's not a great idea. So I might have to dig her up and repot her with no native soil. Um, but I'm kind of just watching her and see, hoping that I put enough of the other types for her to thrive and kind of figure it out. So we're watching her. Um, something that I'm going to talk about throughout my garden is I am a seed planter. I just throw seed everywhere. I don't like sit there and baby the seeds. I just throw them everywhere and whatever seed takes is going to be who takes. Uh, this is a marigold seed that I just threw around and this is one that took. Uh, the cool thing about just throwing seed around is that the ones that do survive you're not gonna have to baby like this marigold grew through all of this wood chips she survived the heat the sun the nights and I didn't do anything to her other than just watering this mango tree and she survived so she's gonna basically need no help from me to grow up big and strong and put out flowers and that's why I like to do that and I will uh, point that out around the garden 
So we have a mango tree. This is a Santa Rosa plum tree. Um, she's definitely putting on some height, a little bit close to the house. Um, but I'm going to just watch her growth, make sure I keep her pruned down and um, hope that um, she's okay here. Um, I think that she's going to be okay. I feel like she's going to um, grow. She's not a, uh, it's not a full dwarf, but like it's not, she's not a full size plum tree. And I think she's going to be okay here close to the house. But she is, has already put on quite a bit of growth this year. She was a pretty small tree. This is actually all the new growth here. And um, we'll see. She didn't put any, she did put a couple flowers on, but we'll see if she um, flowers anymore or flowers next year. This is a Barbados cherry, and she is not in full uh, sun all day, which I hear is where they really, really thrive. But you can see from this perspective all the bright green new growth here on this plant. Um, she's been in the ground probably for about three weeks now and is putting out significant new growth. And I am told that the Barbados cherry absolutely love the desert heat. They love the desert sun. They just thrive, thrive, thrive in all day sun in the desert. Um, and so she does get some afternoon shade, as you can already see here. She's already in the shade and it's about four o'clock. Um, but she is just already blooming and I'm so excited to have her. <laughs> Not a tree, but... Uh, the next one here next to us is a Barbados. I have a dragon fruit. I'm not going to talk too much about the dragon fruit yet because I have not taken the time to really take care of her yet. I put her in the ground. She's doing all right. Um, I know that I need to actually cut off these additional shoots here and just keep one so that she actually puts energy into fruiting. I just have not done it yet. So that'll be something that we do together here. Um, I'll actually, you know, sit down, take the time to actually do that. Um, but just kind of letting her well really just wait actually I'm just there's just I haven't had the time yet so she's still waiting um here are some more seeds that I just sprinkled in again there was a big old cactus um barrel cactus here that fell over and died and so I just sprinkled a bunch of wildflower seeds in the hole and we have a bunch of different plants coming up um, I'm not 100% sure yet who this is I think she's going to be some type of a wildflower but this is blue flax seed here um, this is kind of an annual, but she'll probably end up um, growing back. I, I kind of imagine she's going to end up growing back or reseeding herself and growing back here. Um, poppy as well, one that I just threw in. And if you look down, I put these sticks up here because the cats, I think, were trying to... They kind of almost killed my first Moringa baby seed, but I have two baby Moringa trees down here. Here's the first one, and there's the second one. This one was grew up potted or grown first seeded first but she uh, got crushed and I think a cat came over and sat on her so I put this little fence of sticks around so that the cats can't sit on the next one because this one as you can see is already growing up quite big and tall so we'll have a moringa tree actually out of this area out of this place where a falling cactus um, lost its life which I was pretty sad about um, but to no avail we will have a new tree and it'll be a moringa tree growing right here um which we have one other big moringa in the garden i do have some artichokes i have three different artichokes in the garden and i absolutely love taking green onions from the grocery store and saving them if it has roots on it i cannot compost them almost it's almost impossible um, and so I save them and I plant them all over the garden. So there's quite a few. Some of them are doing really, really well. You see these are walking onions and that's why she's fallen over. She's going to drop her seed over there and hopefully start a new green onion right up against the house there. But these are artichokes, perennial food. They'll grow back every year. I did not get flowers on those yet, but again, this is a huge aloe bush that has probably been here for 15 years or so. And um, I haven't really tuned into her yet, but I don't think I can do anything, any harm to her. I'm going to get some more water on her, and she just is going to keep growing. Um, all right, I've got a second apple tree. I know that this is an Anna apple um, that I got here from the urban farm. And no fruit, no flowers, no fruit this year, but she was a bare root tree as well. And um, hasn't grown much in height yet, but has put out quite a few uh, leaves and it's bushing up and I think it's just kind of getting acclimated and uh, setting her roots in and figuring it out. Um, I have another, um, or a mandarin, a sweet mandarin here, back here. There are some mandarins already set on there, if you can see. 
they're growing daily. Um, she seems to be, there's two mandarins in the front yard. She seems to be growing up and the second mandarin is not growing as tall, but the mandarins are getting bigger and there's more mandarins. So I'm paying attention to where I planted trees and how they're, you know, how they're thriving in the different areas, different parts of the garden. Um, we also have another cow pea here, some more blue flax, some more poppy. Looks like, oh yay, I've been waiting for lupine. Oh, this just made me so happy. Oh, that's so cool. We have lupine. I've been waiting for her to sprout. Yay, she's with the mandarin. <laughs> this is a little baby lupine there. Got to watch her. I had her in one other area, but something happened and she, she didn't survive. So, or lupin, I call it lupine, but maybe lupin. Um, poppy and blue flax and also a grocery store green onion so we have all of that here growing underneath the mandarin tree oh that makes me so happy to see that <laughs> I have a jasmine vine that has woken up um, I planted her and she put out a couple new flowers but now I can tell she's just putting into all of her energy into greening up and uh, wrapping around this um, our garden gate. I did put the gate up. The gate was not here before. I put the gate up myself and I have not finished them. I actually have one more area that I'm going to put a gate on, but um, the jasmine is doing really well. She's bouncing back. We have three blueberry bushes and um, blueberries are not something that you commonly grow in the desert, but you can grow them if you have enough mulch and you water them well. And so we have one there one there and one there. So three blueberry bushes. I have my first fig tree. This is a fig that was uh, a bare root tree. And I wasn't sure if she was gonna grow here at the top and it looks like this is dying off. So I'm probably gonna trim that back. Our dog got to this tree when she was a bare root in the backyard. And so I wasn't sure if she's gonna make it, but she did. And I think she's gonna just take a couple seasons to um, get strong and overcome that attack by the dog. <laughs> I have a boysenberry bush back there that is actually really taking off. Um, I'm going to uh, very carefully, because it looks like she does have some pokies, uh, make sure she remembers she's next to a fence over here. But she's growing, and I think next year we'll probably have quite a few boysenberries. I just trimmed the mesquite tree. Remember, all the matter, all the decaying matter just gets dropped down on the ground. We don't want to throw it away. Uh, it'll slowly, over time, turn into new dirt. I have a desert golden peach tree here, and that's actually why I had to trim the mesquite uh, to give her a little bit of space because she is sprouting up. She's going to be a big healthy peach tree, and this mesquite will probably end up having to share space with her. I'll probably end up having to trim back this mesquite and give her space to make sure that, um, that she can grow and put out peaches for us. Um, down on the bottom more, I have uh, more blue flax. Um, and more poppy and this actually looks like a baby mesquite tree um, I'm almost positive it is and if it is I'll probably dig her up and um, and replant her somewhere else I don't know if I'm in the shade can you see let's see there we go it's a little baby mesquite tree I'm pretty sure um, and so I'll probably pick her up and, and plant her somewhere else either in the front yard or in the backyard um, so we have, uh, of course, rosemary growing, and rosemary is actually really prevalent throughout the desert as a hedge. People plant her all over the place because she just thrives. What is that? Huh. Uh, because she just thrives everywhere. And so I have rosemary in the front yard and the backyard and plan on keeping rosemary. It's a really powerful medicine that I use with my children consistently. Again, we have more flax, more poppy, and then I don't know who this is going to be. It might be um, the uh, blue bonnet flowers, and they just haven't popped up yet. But uh, I'll show you. I have some of those flowering in the front. I have dahlias in a little circular garden here, um, just for color and diversity, and um, they're not super bug attractors, but I did plant some dahlias because they're just some of my favorite flowers. I absolutely love them. Let's circle back around here to the front. Um, I just planted these, oh, what are they called? I have another one here that I'm going to plant, Celosia. And they're annual flowers, but 
Um, the children and dad really just liked how they looked and why not plant some beautiful flowers in the garden to add again more diversity um, gives me something to do because I'm not I'm not planting as much right now also so I just love having more flowers to plant um, and who knows you know some bugs might like it and really enjoy um, that flower you never know all right we've got two elderberry bushes in the garden uh, this is a mix they're both Mexican elderberry so this is the first one and she has not put out any flowers yet again I'm watching all these plants to see where they're at and if they like being where they're at she hasn't put out any flowers yet and the ones in the, the front that's getting like full sun all day has put out flowers so um, she might not enjoy the afternoon shade as much back here um, but we'll watch and see and you know if there's a need to transplant um, you know, I'll probably figure that out by the fall. Second artichoke. This artichoke is also thriving here. So whereas this elderberry is not as doing as well here, this artichoke is doing really well and is thriving. That artichoke is not doing as well there, but this one is really likes it here. And that's kind of the, the thing when it comes to first learning to plant a garden in a new area, you have to find out what everyone, where everyone likes being. I've been pulling these up all over. I think they are palm tree, uh, baby palm trees. And so I'm just pulling them up. Whatever they are, I don't want that many of them. So I gotta pull them up. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, I've just planted some yarrow and yarrow is not something that's super common in the desert, but I put her next to this guava tree. Um, that also has some beautiful purple peas underneath it um, because we have had to build a shade net for the guava. Um, she was starting to get scorched by the evening, afternoon, evening sun. So I put up a shade net, which is going to give this yarrow a little bit of protection from the morning sun so she can survive with the afternoon sun. And I love yarrow for medicinal purposes for the pollinators and just because I love the plant. So I planted her in. This is a pineapple guava, and I'm really hoping that we get some, a few pineapple guavas here. Um, actually, I can't fully tell yet if that's going to be her fruit, um, but I'm really hoping that we get a couple. I have to help hand pollinate her because her pollinators are not here naturally. Uh, but she puts out the most amazing flowers, which I can tell because I covered her shaded her she's not putting out as many flowers so I'm gonna have to pay attention to that I do have a goji berry bush that didn't make it it seems like she didn't survive and I don't know what happened uh, if you are a goji berry grower can you please give me some advice I do not know what happened to this goji berry plant she might bounce back um, but she just didn't do well uh, I have two healthy chrism plants in the garden uh, this one I just planted. This is the second one from the Growers Exchange uh, back east. Uh, another favorite medicinal of mine. Um, this is the plant that is also known as curry plant and puts out or creates the oil helichrysum, which is a super healer. So I grow her anytime I can. I have two of her now. Uh, we have a blackberry vine that won't go crazy because we're in the desert. It won't take over the whole garden like it would in Portland, but uh, blackberry vine. I just planted some lantana which is a local favorite of butterflies um, and will be very self-sustaining as it grows into the bush or ground cover. It does put out little blackberry-like vine or berries that the birds eat. And again, a favorite of the uh, hummingbirds. Um, I planted some foxglove just because uh, I don't think that she's going to end up surviving many seasons, but I planted her for, again, diversity, flowers, color, beauty, um, just for my own enjoyment. Um, it looks like she's going to put out a few more flowers here, though, but she, we'll see what happens with her, whether or not she's going to actually make it um, and, and reflower again next year. Probably not. Um, some garden sage that I planted, and here's a little nasturtium seed that I just threw in and sprouted. Again, this is going to be one of the strongest nasturtium plants around because she she survived on her own. And um, this is a mulberry, a uh, dwarf mulberry. So not the tree, but the berries are actually dwarf. They're smaller dwarfs. She's going to be an extremely abundant tree, and that puts out a ton of food. And I'm so happy to have her. Um, but again, first year, so she's growing strong. 
This is our other mandarin tree, again, so shorter, right? Not as tall of a grower, but has way more mandarins on her. And they seem to be getting bigger than the other trees too. So she might like, um, so I've got to figure out who likes what area. Um, I have a black grape vine here that has not woken up yet, but I do see some little puffy um, areas or little puffy sprouts here. There's a few on her. So she's going to wake up soon. Hopefully the next time I upload a video here, we have um, some leaves that are coming out of her. Uh, I have a beautiful desert olive tree, which do really, really well in the desert. I make olive leaf extract from the leaves and um, haven't ever grown a desert olive. Um, so I'm not sure how many olives we'll get and if I actually try to make oils or some other things or pickled olives, but definitely growing her for the shade um, because she's in a, a, a self-sustaining tree in the desert and for the leaves too, because I do make medicine from her. We've got comfrey, the beautiful comfrey, and comfrey is not something that you find in the desert too often, but she is finally getting established and putting out a lot of new growth. And this is a bioaccumulator, right? This is kind of a plant kind of similar to dandelion that has a really deep tap root. She grows deep down into the earth, um, breaking up minerals and hopefully this clay and absorbs a lot of the minerals into her roots and um, leaves those minerals or grows with those minerals in her leaves and ends up creating a really really mineral rich leaf that you can once she grows big and tall because the plant will actually grow like super high up uh, you can chop it down the plant will regrow easily and use those leaves to add to your ground for more minerals for uh, to break down into compost for the next year's plants so that's some concord grapes that i have there they're kind of slow to set in but i have three concord grape vines here and these are some uh, blue bonnet flowers that I think that's what I was saying. I think that those uh, leaves are gonna uh, actually look a little different. There's some flower that back there, some wild flower, but they just started flowering. And how beautiful are these little flowers already? So pretty. Um, we have three Concord grapevines here, and again, here's another seed that is coming up that I don't know what it is yet. Uh, it might be a um, I put a couple of sunflower seeds over here. It could be that, but I have another one coming up over there as well. I just spread seed everywhere and who pops up, pops up. Um, all of the flowers actually along the fence over here, I just sprinkled the seed along the fence um, and waited to see who came up. And quite a few flowers came up actually. Uh, this is a lemon guava and she is covered in fruit. Let me step back and show you guys her all the way. Um, this lemon guava is covered in fruit. She's absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't even know how many fruit we have. We have at least 10, maybe 15 different fruit. They keep growing in size every day and I cannot wait to see and eat them. This is her first year in the ground and her first year with us and she's already sprouting a ton of fruit. She also has two cowpea plants down here in the bottom and some chives. I have sweet potato slips here. The earth is probably not soft enough to actually get too many sweet potatoes, but the greens are edible, perennial green, and I'd love to see her grow out and cover this, uh, become a, a like, strong ground cover, even if it's just from that area. I don't know what she's gonna do, but we'll see, but she's here. I have a banana tree. Um, this is a, oh, shoot, a, what kind of banana tree is this now? Oh, I can't remember. Ah, shoot. I can't remember. I got it from Green Life or Seamus O'Leary um, Nursery down in South Phoenix, and she is thriving. I did have to go ahead and put some shade up for her because she was struggling a little bit, but she's putting out a new leaf about every other week, and there goes the next leaf, and this leaf just popped up. Um, I mean, it just unfurled all the way, I mean, probably like last week, so she's, she's thriving. She's pumping them up continually. Uh, let's go around the back here. Um, because my pomegranate just gave me a beautiful gift. Look at her. She just put out, I can't see on that side, huh? There we are. She just put out some new buds just on one leaf or one um, stem. But that was really exciting. I came out here and found pomegranate flowers. Um, so hopefully, hoping that she does that all over the place. But um, we know she's doing good because she's putting some out. This moringa tree is the tallest tree so far. It's getting the most growth. She's gonna be probably a six foot tree in the next two months. So I can't wait to show you guys the update of that. And I think even has a few seeds already setting. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be little moringa seeds, but 
she is thriving so happy let me go ahead i'm gonna eat a leaf of yours okay friend just one i haven't really eaten much of her at all i have offered some to the neighbors um so they could taste what moringa's like but ah uh, look at the mighty mighty moringa they thrive in the desert just planted some sunflowers in those so I, those did not grow from seed they were potted um this is wildflower the same wildflower that was over there by the with the apple tree um wildflower desert flower she's just going to keep growing and thriving i won't have to worry too much about here here's a bunch of seeds so i'm going to go ahead and collect these bad boys here right now with you and i'm going to spread them and as i water these seeds have a pretty good chance of taking root and they'll add again more diversity although we already have this plant in here more diversity in other parts of the garden they'll add more stable plants that break whose roots break into this uh, into this soil and help soften it up and create a lot more underground diversity and they also provide more um, more food for the pollinators so what up d got a neighbor coming by they are you go ahead and knock on the door huh? i said you can go ahead and knock on the door they're there they're in there um yeah so that's what i do i'm just going to take the seeds and spread them around and uh see who pollinates or who sets seed some of them will some of them won't um, I have a Fuerte avocado here and had to cover her up as well. And I'm happy I did because she's putting out a lot of new growth. Um, again, been in the ground for just a couple of months. But uh, hit the alarm, but love. But she's sprouting. She's thriving. She's loving being here. Um, lemongrass, just planted lemongrass yesterday. This agave was also here before too, but just planted the lemongrass. She is does really well in the desert heat. She's going to grow up big and tall. Uh, we've got a hibiscus with some yellowing leaves. I'm not 100% sure why she might get, I don't know if she's getting overwatered. Um, if that's why this is happening, um, because she kind of, she wasn't putting out any more flowers. And so I stopped. So I picked up the watering because the flowers were all dying. So I got to figure out what's going on with her. She might just need some um, nutrition. I might give her some fish emulsion, but since I pumped up the watering, she's putting out more flowers again, but the leaves are turning yellow. So, uh, I'm going to do some research on this hibiscus, find out what's going on with her, but more flax, poppy, more of the wildflowers. We got some dill that I put in as a little bitty plant and she's thriving. This is my little, um, pollinator section. Here goes the other elderberry too. You can see, um, She's got more, well, she has flowers. The other one didn't at all. Um, I think we're going to get a few elderberries in there. Um, but the other one is bushing up more, so they're kind of just growing a little differently. But um, dill, this is my little pollinator section, so I'm planting a lot of flowers and pollinator attractors and also put in some a little water dish back there with some, um, some uh, habitat for insects. And uh, just so to make sure that the bees do want to come and hang out and be here, you got to give them places to be. You got to give them food. Um, you got to give them nectar and food and you have to give them water and also habitat to hide in uh, when it's hot. Maybe not so much for the bees, but for other insects. And we've been seeing quite a few, um, a couple different flowers. This is a an evergreen milkweed and it's native to the Sonoran Desert so she'll actually uh, perennial she'll actually grow up bigger and bigger and create a big bush of milkweed and it's an evergreen it's a pine leaf milkweed and she's an evergreen so she'll be green all year and put out flowers every spring I'm really excited to have her here uh, we have a loquat tree who is continuing to put out new leaves she's growing nicely she seems to like where she's at I have three passion flower vines that yeah, they haven't really developed as much as I'd like for them to, but they're here and they're growing and I'm happy about it. Um, we've got a jujube, jujube in the house. She was a bare root tree and is thriving. She has so many flowers on her. I really hope to get some fruit this year because I have not actually eaten a jujube. And there's enough fruits on here that I imagine we get some. Look at the wasp actually. Can y'all see that wasp? Yep, pollinating. Now that's amazing that that big old wasp is messing with these little bitty flowers but she is she found the juices and also ants Let's see if you can see the ants or not 
uh, ants are pollinating the jujube tree and she's actually covered in ants. Um, a lot more uh, wildflowers that are starting to bloom all over which I'm really happy about um, and this is on the outside of the property but it's just lined with flowers so you know anybody who passes by or drives by gets to also enjoy the fruits of our labor fig tree this fig tree is covered in figs and um, I'm excited I mean well for first year she's covered I think she has like about 10 fruit 10 figs nobody in my house likes figs except me so guess what <laughs> I'm gonna be really happy when they get ripe. But um, she is thriving. And look at these green onions. I, I wanted to make sure I showed you guys. Look how large these things are. This is from the grocery store, y'all. And there is some um, insect death happening there. It looks like someone captured someone. But that's what it's all about, right? Um, oh, figs all up and down. Wow, I cannot wait. Um, biodiversity at its, at its finest. Um, two and a half months ago this was all rock there was no life here um, no flowers except for the agave or the uh, um, aloe there was nothing and we brought in a ton of biodiversity oh another grapevine too I've got some princess grapes here as well and here we are and I'm so proud of it and I just love being here and this was a long first video because I wanted to just do a full breakdown I think I talked about everyone if I missed anyone I'm sorry pretty sure I got everyone um, but this is our our front yard Phoenix food forest garden in full effect um, falling in love with being here every day I am using a calcium garden hose filter I do recommend that the plants have been improving um, I have been happier since I put that on but this is her 720 square feet about um, two months in things are going to really pop and I look forward to sharing the growth of this front yard food forest garden with you all so I hope that you enjoyed today's video and um, I'll see y'all again soon. Peace.